Hello friends and welcome to JWReasoning.com. It's been recorded in United States history that one of the founding fathers of the United States, Patrick Henry, said the words, give me liberty or give me death. I want to tell you that for me personally, those are words to live by. This is how I feel. Having grown up in this country, having the freedoms that I've had as a, an American, and as a Christian, I really feel the love of those words, give me liberty or give me death. Now, having grown up as a Jehovah's Witness, most people have felt that they have been very restricted. I never felt that way. Maybe it was because the upbringing that I had was pretty balanced. My parents seemed to be very balanced about things. I was given the option as to whether or not I wanted to get an education, even though my dad was an elder. I chose not to do that. I chose a trade and it ended up putting me into a career where I own my own business. And I've, I've been very blessed in having a successful business in spite of not having a college degree. I had a I have part of a trade, the automotive field, and it's done very well for my wife and I but give me liberty or give me death. I was just recently talking to one of my Jehovah's Witness friends and I realized that he feels very oppressed. Now, the organization would have you think that when you become part of the truth, as they know it, part of the organization as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, that you are freed. And I will say that when you become one of Jehovah's Witnesses, if you have lived an immoral lifestyle, there are things that you read and study in the Bible as a Jehovah's Witness or as a Christian in general that will help you to overcome an immoral lifestyle. So it does set you free, not just the organization, but Christianity, God's Word, the Bible. Christ Jesus gives us an example on how to live a clean, immoral life. The problem is the organization is given credit for that rather than Christ Jesus being given the credit for that. But again, I go back to give me liberty or give me death. Why am I talking about this? Well, I wanted to do this video because after talking with my friend, and I made this comment years ago, and I made it again recently. I've said it a few times over the years, and it really struck my friend when I said this. I said, you know, if I had to live my life under the control of the governing body in the new world, I would rather be dead for eternity knowing what happens when we die, that we're not going to suffer in an eternal burning hell like a lot of Christians believe. If we understand and know what happens when we die, what would I personally rather do? Rather than live under the control of the governing body and have to live a fake life, not being able to be free to speak the things that I really think, to be free to be who I truly am, I would rather be dead for eternity. But the beauty of it is, having come to know the true Jesus Christ, having come to know the true Father of Jesus, this has helped me to appreciate that I now am freed. I have liberty. One of the texts I'd like to share with you is in Luke chapter 4, verse 16 through 21. And I'm reading this from the New World Translation. And it says, He then went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. This is talking about Jesus, of course. And according to his custom, on the Sabbath day, he entered the synagogue and stood up to read. So the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, and he opened the scroll and found the place where it was written, Jehovah's Spirit is upon me, because he anointed me to declare good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and a recovery of sight to the blind, to send the crushed ones away free, to preach Jehovah's acceptable year. With that, he rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the attendant, and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue were intently fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture that you just heard is fulfilled. Now, we know that he was quoting from Isaiah, but what did Jesus say? Notice what he did here in verse 18. He says, He's reading from Isaiah where it says, Jehovah's Spirit is upon me, that's Jesus, because he anointed me. He anointed Christ, Messiah. That means the anointed one. He anointed 
me, Jesus said, to declare good news to the poor. He didn't say, I'm anointing a group of men to do this. I'm anointing a group of eight men in New York to do these things, to be the governing body. No, Jesus was the one that was going to do this. Next it says, he sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and a recovery of sight to the blind. It didn't say that he was going to anoint or appoint an organization to do these things. Christ said that he would do these things. He began doing it in the first century, and when he poured his spirit out in the book of Acts, he has continued to do it down to this day. How? Through individuals, through people like you and me and others who study the Bible and simply share the word of God with others. The truth will set you free. This is what he said in John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. Take a look. Jesus then went on to say to the Jews who had believed him, if you remain in my word, you are really my disciples. I want you to notice, he didn't say, if you remain in the organization of Jehovah's Witnesses, if you remain in a particular denomination, if you remain loyal to the governing body, he doesn't say those things. What's he say? Look at it again. Jesus went on to say to the Jews who had believed him, if you remain in my word, you are really my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Jesus came to give liberty to the captives. And I want to tell you, as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, we're captives. We are captives of the organization. We're in bondage. And I want to tell you that the freedom that I feel since having left, I didn't, I realize it from time to time, but I don't realize it more than when I talk to a Jehovah's Witness that is going through the bondage and the, the binding and the oppression of, well, I have this friend, my relative or my friend, and I don't want to lose them. And if I leave, they're going to leave me. You see, the truth will set you free. And I really am, for me personally, friends, give me liberty or give me death. Christ liberates us from these things. Yes, there is a cost. You have to count the cost when you're going to, going to become a Christian. There is a responsibility. We are held accountable to live a moral life, to treat others the way we want to be treated. But our loyalty is not to an organization. I know in many ways I'm preaching to the choir, for lack of a better expression. Many of you know these things. But friends, if you're teetering, if you're on that bubble and you're feeling the weight, you're feeling the bondage of being in the organization, you're feeling the burden that it gives you, there is freedom in Christ Jesus. If you come to Jesus Christ, pray to the Father through the Son and ask them to help you to overcome this bondage, this weight. Give me liberty or give me death. Those words by that man, Patrick Henry, were powerful words, not only for this country, the United States of America in which I live, but these words go right back to the foundation of Scripture. Jesus came to set us free, free from the bondage that the organization puts you in. And I just hope that you will take the time to study your Bible. Remember, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through Him. He will set you free, friends, not an organization, not a group of men, but Jesus Christ. And I hope you study. Please continue to do this and realize, I know at first it's very difficult. Breaking away is not easy, especially when your loved ones, whether it's your spouse or your kids or your parents or your best friends, whoever it is, when they're part of the organization, it's so hard to break away because the organization has you in bondage. They have them in bondage. And even though I'm out, I'm still in a sense, I'm free, but in a sense, the organization still has its tentacles in my life because there are members of my family that are still attached to it. But the freedom that I feel and the weight that is lifted has made my whole attitude different. My whole demeanor is different. I feel like a new person. I feel like a new man. And I've been out for a long time, but talking to my Jehovah's Witness friend, 
that is so miserable right now. You know, I told him the truth will set you free, brother, and it will. And I just wanted to do this video just to make you think a little bit, just to share a few Bible texts with you to help you to realize that there is life after the organization. I've heard many YouTubers say that, and it's so true. You know, I don't want to beat a dead horse with them because this, these videos have already been done, but maybe one day I will share some ways that I've been freed and some things that have helped me to overcome some of those fears that I had initially. I hope this video helps you in some way. Again, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Keep studying your Bibles and keep praying that the Father will send the Son into your hearts, that we can make the changes necessary to be able to free ourselves from the organization and come to Christ Jesus and our Heavenly Father. Remember those things. And my prayer is that Jehovah will bless you until we meet again. Music